Adventures of the Shadow are on the air, brought to you each week at this time by your neighborhood Blue Coal dealer. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. A spell of fair weather may fool you into thinking that winter is through for this year. But don't you believe it. There is still cold weather ahead of us. So play safe and make sure you have a good supply of blue coal on hand. It's especially wise to make sure you get blue coal, because blue coal is particularly prepared for home heating. There are many different qualities of coal, as you know. But when you order blue coal, you can be sure of getting the finest quality coal for your money. And that means real comfort plus economy. So get in touch with your neighborhood blue coal dealer tomorrow. Order your blue coal right away. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The secret of hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Altar of Death. I can see that travel folder now, Lamont. You want peace and quiet. Come to beautiful San Luis, the island paradise. <laughs> do those tom-toms bother you, Margo? Well, they do funny things to my spine. Well, probably some native festival. Shall we go back into the hotel? No, somehow I feel safer out here on the veranda. <laughs> you know, interesting thing about those islands, no matter how much modern civilization appears in the cities, back in the bush... Back in the jungle, the native reverts to the type. Well, if you think you're making me feel any better, you're wrong. I thought we came to Port San Luis for a rest. Might as well try to get a rest in the subway station. How <laughs> name? How name? Where is place is all you? How name? Who's that? One of the guests. You see, he's coming up on the veranda. Where's that from, Clive? How name? Oh, uh, Mr. Eustace. Eh? Who called me? Who's there? Lamont Cranston, Mr. Eustace. Oh, yes. Couldn't see you very well in this half light. Ah. Hello, Miss Lane. Hello, Mr. Eustace. You look rather worried. I am a bit. I say, look here, have you seen that native proprietor around anywhere, Cranston? Only? Well, no, I haven't. Not since dinner. I don't quite understand all this. There's something mighty strange going on. I knew it, Lamont. The ceremonial was never listed on the travel folder. You're yeah, quite right, Miss Lane. The village is deserted. Not a soul on the streets and every shop is boarded up tight. It's going to be trouble. I'd like to know about it. Yes, we all would. I spoke to one old man who was crouching behind the door of his hut, but all I could get out of him was one native word that he kept repeating over and over. Well, what was it, you said? It sounded something like Gilmet. Gilmet? It is a rare oh. word in Port St. Louis, Miss Lane. Well, only there you are. The word Gilmet, my friends, is not a word to be spoken lightly. No? Well, what does it mean, Oni? It is a native expression, Mr. Cranston, which means the night that eats men. The night that eats men? Is that why the natives are hiding behind locked doors? Uh, yes. It started, Mr. Eustace, some ten years ago with the disappearance of a Scot explorer and his wife named Macbeth. They vanished from this island and were never seen again. That was ten years ago, this very night. But but these Macbeths could have just gone away of their own accord, couldn't they? As they could have, yes. But on the same night, Miss Lane, every year for ten years past, two people, a man and a woman, have disappeared without a trace from Port St. Louis. That is why the natives call it Kilmet, the night that eats men. Now, 
ridiculous night of superstition. It does sound fantastical, Nick. Eh? And decidedly unpleasant. Look. Look. The great and terrible Kulomo is calling for the yearly sacrifice. What? He means that volcanic island off the shore there to the east of San Luis. Oh, yes. Why, smoke seems to be rising from its crater. But that volcano is extinct. Is the island inhabited? Yes. By the spirits. The evil spirits. The rollers of darkness. Now, oh, now, look here, Only I can understand these poor ignorant lodgers in the village going overboard on this superstition business. But you've had the advantage of an education. Surely you can't believe all this nonsense. In your land you have few superstitions. But here on San Luis it is different. I know. I have seen. Well... I do know it's too crazy that you can't get a native to go within three miles of that island. It is death to set foot on it. Oh, hey, what was that? Mulhava. What did you say, Oni? Lamonti's terrified. Oh, forgive me. I now, look, Oni, look. If you're in trouble or danger, you forgive me. Please. Well, we'll be waiting outside here for you, Oni. Waiting outside. Oh, I know you are here somewhere. You have come for me. I am ready to die. You. You. Let in the window. Goro Tungo Mulava. Come. Come. I am ready. Uh. Only his expression is like. like death, Mr. Eustace. Oh, no, Lamont. Oh. Who? Who killed him? A native, I'd say. See the tiny poison dart stuck in his throat? Yes. That did the job. I only seemed to know this was coming. Listen. The weird flute music again. Came from somewhere outside. Can you see anything from that window, Margot? Lamont, there's a figure running down to the beach. Where? See? Look there in the moonlight. He's getting into a canoe. We've got to stop him. Come on. Out this door here. There he goes. To be pulling away from shore rapidly. Can you recognize him? I'm afraid the moon isn't bright enough for that. Wait. Whoever it is, he'll go around the island and land somewhere on the opposite shore. Why do you say that, Miss Lane? Well, there isn't another body of land anywhere around here that he could escape to except... Except that volcanic island, Colomo. That's where he seems to be headed. Houston, where can I get a boat? The mark. You're not going to follow us there. That's right. In spite of the legend that no one has ever returned from that island? Yes, Margo. How about it, Houston? I have a slow but sturdy fishing launch, Cranston. You may have it on one condition. Well, what's that? That you let me come along. Glad to have you, Eustace. I suppose you'll realize that this isn't going to be exactly a pleasure trip. I understand that. Well, then, what are we waiting for? You too, Margo. Well, you didn't think I was going to stay here on San Luis alone, did you? Come on, let's go. Can you see him, Eustace? Live. They're dead on his trail. Good. Wish I thought to bring a gun with me. I have one on the boat, Cranston. It's off in the leather side pocket there. Miss Lane can reach it for you. Oh, yes. Here it is, Lamont. Thanks. Eustace, can we get any more speed out of this boat? He's pulling away from me. I've got a wide open now. I think he wasn't in a car. I say, Cranston, there's an arm of water just up ahead there that's thick with submerged reefs and rocks. It's your favorite underground of the sharks that infest these waters. Even the native fishermen avoid it. Do we have to go through that, Lamont? That man in the canoe's going around it. We've got to, Margot. We're going to head him off. We'll be tempting fate if we try it. It's our one chance to overtake him. I do. Mighty slim with a fat. Well, what do you say, Margot? Shall we go after him or turn back? I know what your choice is, Lamont. And it's mine, too. Good. I knew you'd say that. You game, your sister? Oh, sir. It's a good thing I'm a bachelor. I'm going to risk a shot before he gets too far out of range. Don't miss. He might be a nasty customer with those poison dogs. Yeah. Well, here goes. Oh, not so good. Well, what's happened to old dead-eyed Dick, Lamont? I don't know, Margo. Well, I won't miss this time. Not a question. Better conserve our ammunition. What's left in the gun is all I have. Yes, and we don't know what we're liable to run into on that island. Hold on! Hold on! Oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Still in one piece, Eustace? Oh, so. The old Lord's been up to fast, but she's fairly sturdy. Oh, Lamont, I could swear I saw a big shark just licking his chops a moment ago. Take it easy, Eustace. We'll pick our way through this stretch of water. We've gained enough to afford it. All right, Joe. Come on, look. Those fires on the shore of the island. I see them. Oh, they seem to be moving. Your fires are natives holding torches, Margot. Yes, and some of the evenings are coming out from the island shore in canoe. Well, a reception committee. All the net That's the fire ceremony. The death call. So... The hunters become the prey. Well, let's turn back quickly, Lamont. Those canoes are filled with savages. You know what that means. I guess you're right, Eustace. Back it is. Yes, and let's see if we can get a little more speed out of this lawn. All right, sir. Eustace. They're coming at us fast. Can't get them all out of this boat down. Try them. Uh-oh. Well, Eustace, we couldn't have picked a better time for the motor to go dead. It's caught an appropriate word at the moment. And the native's only about 50 yards away from that prey of yours, Lamont. Well, we still have a gun. I'll now, pick... now, don't shoot at the question. You have enough bullets to do any good. With those blow guns and poison darts, we wouldn't have a chance. I guess you're right, Eustace. Lamont. Yes, Margot. Any ideas? Not a glimmer. Well, we've been in tight places before. Yes, but this one is a prize winner. Looks like we're in for it, Margot. Here they come. In just a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of Altar of Death. First, here's something that concerns your health, your comfort, and your pocketbook, all three. What is it? It's simply the advice to heat your home with blue coal. You see, blue coal is tailor-made for your home. That is to say, it's carefully sized and graded to fit the special requirements of your furnace. That's why it gives you even, comfortable, dependable warmth throughout the house in every room. That's why it's also such a money saver. It burns so efficiently that you enjoy real economy with blue coal. When, on top of all this, your home is equipped with the new blue coal automatic heat regulator, then you certainly have a modern home heating combination that's mighty hard to beat. The blue coal heat regulator is easily and quickly installed. Quickly removed, too, in case you move. And it's easy to operate. You'll be amazed to discover the thousands of steps, yes, literally thousands, this regulator will save you in the course of a season. Ask your neighborhood blue coal dealer to tell you all about it. He's listed under the words blue coal in the yellow section of your classified phone directory. Now, back to the shadow. <laughs> the most savage crew I've ever seen. A native in the lead boat wants to talk, Lamont. Huh? You know, fight! What did he say? He's asking us to surrender without fighting. They evidently mean to take us alive. They could kill us in a minute if they wanted to. We still have a chance this way. If Eustace is right, Lamont, we still have a chance. You! You no fight! Okay. We won't fight. At least temporarily. I take you to chief. Katomo, Katomo, Katomo! He likes it. Where's Mr. Houston? He was right behind us a moment ago. He was hauled off in another direction, Margot. Well, Lamont, you don't think that... Oh, no, no. Let's not cross bridges before we come to them, Margot. Hold on! This is Steve's house. Go in! <clears throat> Push in the back. It's hardly a formal invitation. Yes, we haven't much choice, Lamont. I bring prisoners. This. Good evening, I've been expecting you. But, but what? you're not surprised to see a white man here, huh? But he's turning up everywhere, I suppose. We'll introduce ourselves later. Meanwhile, I imagine you're rather hungry after your little ocean voyage. We'll fix that immediately. Aluba! Yeah, now, look, uh, all we want No is... trouble, no trouble at all. Aluba, Kato, Kungo! Yes, you are, too. I've told them to take your friend into the village to bring food. Why have you done all this? Why? <laughs> My subjects think you are man and wife. That is why your friend has been separated from you. You'll find the cruelty of very peculiar people with many strange customs. They're idolaters, all of them. Worship a thing called Mulhava. Mulhava? Then... I, 
a rather savage deity that the native seal requires human sacrifice. Beastly chap, Moorhammer. I don't think we're going to like it. Ah, the lady need not fear. I'm on the very best of terms with the cruelty. As a matter of fact, I shall go on ahead now and have the natives prepare for you. You're very kind. I'm happy to oblige. Lamont. <laughs> yes, Margot. Did you see the initials on the silver belt buckle he was wearing? No, I didn't notice. They were capital M, A, C, capital B. Capital M, A, C, capital B. Yes. Didn't Oni tell us that the first two people to vanish from Port San Luis were a Mr. and Miss Baird and his wife? Yes, Margot. I'm afraid he did. <laughs> Well, you don't seem to mind our little adventure, Mr. Eustace. Yes, I noticed that too, Margot. Well, Miss Slide, Mr. Cranston, this supper our absent host has given us is enough to bring a dead man back to hell. You're very great, oh. Mr. Eustace. Now, uh, as you were saying while I was gone, Mr. Cranston, this man, uh, Oni, I believe his name was, told you two people who disappeared from Port San Luis every year on this night. And shortly after telling you this, he was found murdered. Why do you put that in the form of a question? It's evident that you've been listening to every word we've said. Aye, Mr. Cranston. A bad habit of mine. Very bad. Only also mentioned a man named McBain. I see. Are you quite finished your meal? Why, yes, thank you. And now, if you could let us have some fuel for our no, boat. No, we... no, no, no. You must accept my hospitality and stay the night. Or at least part of the night. The natives are well prepared for you. What's that? I use this gong to summon my servants. The natives are coming for the scene. Oh, thank you, my dear. Uh, this is my wife. The natives took rather a fancy to her and made their appreciation. We are both devout worshippers, as a matter of fact. Hey, what's going on here? Your friend only told you about the man and woman who disappear every year from Port San Luis City name is a Cranston. Yes? It is my pleasure to inform you, sir, that you and Miss Lee are the two who disappear this year. No! Aye, huh? aye. I, I, the native in the canoe rather lured you on, I believe. He was the witch doctor of the Kulti tribe who went to Port San Luis to murder Oni because poor Oni... He knew too much. Oh, I see. You were behind that, too. Aye. He had fallen away from the tribal laws. As for you, you see, a man and a woman must be killed in Mool Harbor's honor on this night. You met, as it is called on Port San Luis. What is your part in all this, McBann? For ten years, I have engineered the disappearances of a man and a woman for the purpose of the Mool Harbor sacrifice. But why? Why? This volcanic island is some of the richest diamond territory in the world, Miss Lane. So that's it. Aye. I'm paid for my trouble in diamonds, which are worth more to me than to the savages since I can reach the American and European markets. You see, it's a perfect system. Not quite so perfect as it seems, though, you know. No? No. Because you've overlooked the fact that I have Mr. Eustace's revolver. Oh. Now, you take it to our boat and see the... Oh, yes, Prince, and I forgot to tell you. What, Eustace? The gun is only loaded with blanks. You see, I've never given it to you if it were actually loaded. You! You're in on this, too! Of course, Miss Lane. I happen to be Mr. McBain's contact with his markets abroad. It was an excellent deception, don't you think? Your coming here was playing very carefully. Oh, the Mar- Don't worry, Margot. The net is up here. I will speak to them, my dear. Agato! Agato! It's come for glory, so far, Granny! Rumo! Urhava! I have just told my subjects to take you to the temple of the altar of death on the rim of the volcano. There, after due ceremony, you will be cast into its bottomless pit in flames as a sacrifice to our idol, Mulhava. Oh, no, no, McBad, it's not going to be as easy for me, you fool. Come on, look out! Lamont! Mr. McBad, your native is killed! <laughs> I couldn't have deprived my people of their innocent little fun. No, I am saving you both for the fire sacrifice. Any luck, Lamont? Right not, Margot. This temple dungeon seems to be hewn out of lava formation. Will they come for us soon? Yes, hey, Margot. No matter how they run these things. Oh, the mud. Oh, no, Margot. 
Mustn't let that lunatic McBad enjoy himself over our fear. No, you're right. Is this it, Lamont? Looks like it, Margot. I don't see how we can possibly get out of here. Come out the door. Have they come? A little sliding panel. There's a face peering in, Margot. It is I, Mrs. McBear. Mrs. McBear? I, I want to help you. As I've tried to help all the other poor souls who've fallen into my husband's power. Oh. Oh, I hate him. He's evil. You hate him? I. Will you help us escape? Oh, no. No. I want to, but they'd kill me if I did that. All I can do is to tell you the weak place in my husband's armor. For what you can make out of it. Yes, Mrs. McGrath? The natives fear him. They think he's Mulhava's disciple. They fall on their knees before him. They even made me tell the preachers to keep up the pretense. But if they ever should discover that he uses them and their God for his own selfish ends, they turn on him. I understand you, Mrs. McBear. And I think I see a chance. What do you mean, Lamont? Margot, perhaps the shadow can find a way out. Mrs. McBear, there's nothing I can do unless you open that door. Oh, they kill me. You must, I tell you, if we're all to have a chance. If I open it, I'll warn you I'm armed. And if you accept your escape, I'll have to kill you in self-defense. I agree to those terms, Mrs. McBear. Very well. Just a moment. I'd better make a break for it, Margot. I'll be looking out for you. I didn't want to tell you. Did you see it, Lane? Nothing. Nothing. Yes, so nervous. Mr. Kenton. Mr. Kenton. Where is he? He's gone, Mrs. McBear. Gone. Oh, no. I'll be killed for this. I'll be... They're coming. They're coming. I'll help you, Mrs. McBear. I'll do my best to help you. Here comes my husband. Well, Miss Lane, Mr... Where's Crunch? Where is he? Ah, oh, my dear. This is some of your gentle work. Oh, she couldn't help it. He escaped. She couldn't have stopped. What is it, McBear? Crunch and he's gone. Of course. And we're done for. But they should not take just a woman. No, they will not. They insist on a man, too. But I think we can work out of that emergency. Don't you, you sir? Off you may, McBear. We have Miss Lane, have we not? The best now, man. You forget me. We have you. Oh, yeah. The joke is here. You would do a thing like that. Besides, you need me too much. I need the natives more. Poor Hara! Coro! Too low! No, Miss Lane, not me! Take that man, take him! He and Miss Lane will make him a sacrifice to the mighty Mulhaba! Oh, Mulhaba, we bring this man and woman before your awful presence. Send us good fortune and plentiful food and the shining stones buried in the earth. Apply the torch to the man. Now, take now. his soul to Mulhava and cast him into the crater of Kulumo, the flaming country pie. Kulumo! Now, McMahon, now have mercy, have mercy! Mulhava, Kulumo! Now, McMahon! Mulhava, receive this offering. Now, the woman... The woman, light the human torch. Hold on, Drop that brand. Drop it, I say. What's that? I heard the voice. So, Macbeth, you would set yourself up as a king. That's coming from the idol. Your evil reign is at an end, Macbeth. Magato, Mulhava, speak. You, priest of Mulhava, you understand me. Let there be no more human sacrifices. Siba, Siba. No more sacrifice. Release that woman and set her free. Free the man who came to this island with her. And send them both from Kulomo in safety. Yes, Mulhava. We do as you say. We obey Mulhava. Hello, Mulhava has spoken. No. No, you will not do as he says. If those who get back to Port San Luis alive, they'll come for me and take me away. Mulhava has spoken. We obey. Hello, You do as I say. I'm ruler here. Don't heed this man. Send the prisoners back to Port San Luis. And let there never be a human sacrifice in Kulumo again. We hear. We do the will of Mulhava. You listen to me, ignorant havoc dog. There's no such thing as Mulhava. That's just a lump of painted clay. I'm Mulhava. I built that fool idol. It's me you'll obey. Do you hear me? You, you will not obey him. him. You will do as I have said. Yes, we obey. Aluma! I'll show you that the idol's made of clay. I'll show you who's more powerful. Watch this. There. There, it's cracked and broken, your idol, Mulhava. I guess that'll quiet your almighty highness. Well, don't stand there staring at me. You obey. 
Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. It was only a joke. A joke. A vision, not an idol. Another one. They don't come no closer to me you now. Die. Back. Get back, I say. You I got a gun die. here. Stop or I'll shoot. Stop. No. 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 And as they say in the travelogue pictures, there, fading into the setting sun, we take our last look at the beautiful and... Uh, terrible. And terrible island of Port St. Louis and Kulumo. <laughs> and it was pretty terrible, Lamont. I'll never believe another travel folder. <laughs> Peace and quiet, huh? <laughs> well, you can believe them from now on, Margot. The government is going to civilize and educate those natives. And as for McBain, well, I can't help thinking that he got a sort of poetic justice. How do you mean? His own death came in the form of a sacrifice to the clay idol that he had created as a weapon to hold over the heads of the natives. The god he created destroyed him. In just a moment, we'll bring you a special feature of America at War. But first, we present John Barclay, Blue Coal's home heating expert, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good afternoon, friends. At this time of year, with rapidly changing temperatures, it's very important to know how to bank your fire properly to ensure the utmost comfort. Now, there's no magic about banking your fire, but there is a right way and a wrong way of doing it. For example, many people still cling to the old-fashioned practice of banking the fire with ashes. Of course, this is wrong. It only smothers the fire, and it often causes clinkers. On the other hand, if you bank the fire correctly, you'll not only save fuel, but you'll get quick heat in the morning as soon as you open the draft. Now, if by any chance you're not quite sure of the right method of banking the fire, or if you have any other questions on the operation of your furnace, take my advice. Call your neighborhood blue coal dealer and tell him your trouble. He'll be only too glad to send his John Barclay service man to help you. This man is a graduate of our training school. He'll show you how to bank the fire properly. And he can give you many other hints on how to run your furnace so you'll get more and better heat and save fuel besides. This is an exclusive blue coal dealer service. Thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. We bring you now a dramatic episode that might happen to you. Hello, Ed. How are you? What's new? Hiya, Mac. What are you so happy about? Boy, I'm having a good time these days, Ed. Making good money and spending it, too. Yeah, listen, fella. This country's at war. No time to throw your dough around. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't be a sourpuss. What do you want me to do with my money? Buy defense bonds and stamps. And listen, buy them regularly. Every payday. Right. Friends, now is no time for extravagance. Now is the time to put your money to work for your country. Buy defense bonds and stamps regularly every payday. Urge your friends to buy. Talk it up among your fellow employees. Many firms already are represented 100%. For example, every single employee of the DL&W Coal Company, producers of blue coal, has subscribed to buy defense bonds regularly. Let's show the axis that for nations as well as for men... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. And be sure to phone your neighborhood blue coal dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. Remember, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This story was produced by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of Blue Coal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.